Hi, I'm Henry Hurd and welcome to my bedroom. Today we're going to be talking about Howl's Moving Castle. But what about Howl's Moving Castle? The setting, the animation, the theme? Nope. You already know what this video is going to be about because you're my sociology professor. And what other than sociology would I send you a seven minute video on? First things first, we've got to cover Howl's Moving Castle before we can analyze it. You have to get to know the characters before you can break them down. Let's go. Sophie, the man, the myth, the legend, Howl, and Michael. All right, now that we've gotten to know our three main characters, it's time to look at Howl's Moving Castle from a sociological lens. Let's get into it. Welcome to my roof for a segment I like to call Roof Talk. In this video, I'm going to be discussing three main sociological concepts and analyzing how they appear in Howl's Moving Castle. Those concepts being alienation, resocialization, and personal beliefs. All right, location change and go. Welcome to an orange orchard where we're gonna discuss the first of three sociological concepts, alienation. So alienation is formally defined as the condition in which the individual is isolated and divorced from his or her society, work, or the sense of self. We have alienation to thank for all of our main characters coming together in the first place. It's because of alienation that these rejects of society found each other and the moving castle at all. All of the characters in the moving castle are isolated in their own unique way. Howl is alienated by the general society's fear of him. Sophie, alienated by her curse, which makes her feel like she doesn't belong and prompts her to run away and find the moving castle. Michael feels looked down upon due to his age. Now I'd like to look at Sophie's personal struggle with alienation. Because hers gets much more screen time, we can look at it much more closely and with more detail. Roll clip. Since Sophie has always felt like she wasn't good enough, and all of her life she's been punished with negative sanctions for not fitting into her society's norms, even now that she lives somewhere where those norms don't apply, she's burdened by the effect of the negative sanctions. All right, different sociological concept, different orchard, which brings us to my avocado orchard. And topic number two, which is resocialization. Now, this is yet another sociological concept which will be applied more to Sophie's character and her struggles than any other. What can I say? Her micro-level conflicts are a large plot point. Anyways, resocialization. This term is defined by the text when it says, In the new environment, the old rules no longer apply. The process of resocialization is typically more stressful than normal socialization because people have to unlearn behaviors that have become customary to them. During the film, Sophie goes to live in the moving castle, which, as I've already mentioned, holds different norms than the society she has lived in her entire life. In addition to adapting location-wise, Sophie must also be re-socialized to the role of an old woman when she's cursed with old age by the Witch of the Waste. Though this is a difficult process for Sophie, we, the viewers, are allowed to observe her gain a new perspective as she's re-socialized into these starkly contrasting situations. You already know the drill. Different sociological concept, different orchard. Now here, in the lemon orchard, while Sophie de struggles with her own micro-level conflicts, the whole society must deal with the bitter consequences of war. Ah. Fun fact, 
Hayao Miyazaki didn't think that Howl's Moving Castle would be a box office success in America because of how strongly it paraded his disdain for the Iraq War, which was happening at the time of the film's release. This brings us to our third sociological concept, personal beliefs. OpenStax formally defines personal beliefs when it says, Beliefs are the tenets or convictions that people hold to be true. Individuals in a society have specific beliefs. But of course, Howl's Moving Castle is a fictional movie, and not a 90-minute speech that's just Miyazaki ranting about his personal beliefs. No, he had to be more subtle and creative about how he portrayed them through the screen. Which is where a new plot point is introduced, with the royal decree. Every witcher wizard, which includes Howl. But since this is Miyazaki's way of portraying his anti-war beliefs, Howl cannot possibly agree to the decree, no? No. Instead, we get this exchange of Howl telling Sophie about the horrible creatures that other magi have transformed into in fighting for the war, and that after becoming these creatures, giving up their individuality and free will to fight for a cause which they have no passion for, they cannot escape what they truly have become, a monster. This exchange between Howl and Sophie is most certainly Miyazaki's way of telling the audience that to give up fighting for one's own personal beliefs, to conform exactly to the norms of society and what's expected of you, even if they violate one's moral compass, that's the worst defeat of all. I'm going to be finishing things off with a segment which shall hereby be dubbed Roof Chalk Electric Boogaloo. Thank you for tuning in while I examined Howl's Moving Castle from under a sociological lens. We talked about... Number one, alienation. Number two, re-socialization. And number three, personal beliefs. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Horizons on my Nintendo Switch.